Hi folks, welcome to another video. In this video, we will talk about Java records in detail, but please watch till the very end because I will provide some great tips and things to watch out for when using records. We will talk about whether Java records are really immutable and what are some of the ways to apply them in real projects. But first, let's talk about what they are. Let's say we want to model a simple employee class which is immutable. What does immutable mean? It's a fancy way of saying that we cannot change the data of the object once it is created. The way we would do this is the following. We will create a public class, then have some private final member variables, first name, last name, and the projects they are in. Then we create a constructor. Then we create some public getter methods. Remember, we don't need the setter. The object is supposed to be immutable. Then we create the equals method. Then we create the hash code method. And then we create the two string method. By the time we are done, we are left wondering what we are trying to do in the first place. These other methods like equals and hash code are required for using in collections objects. And of course, toString provides us with a good string representation when we want to log it to the console. These can definitely be created automatically by the IDE, but there is still a problem. If we change or add a member variable, we have to remember to make the corresponding change to these other methods. Otherwise, we would get some surprising results at runtime. Now with Java 16, all of this can be replaced by the following a single Java record class. Isn't that nice? That's precisely when we use Java records, when we want to model immutable data. Under the hood, a Java record is basically nothing but a class, and it extends from another class called java.lang.record. We will see the compiled version of the record in a bit, when we see the internals. A record is made up of components. The three components here are the fields that you see, first, last, and projects, which directly will map to private final member variables in the compiled class. During the compile time, Java compiler will automatically create these member variables. Compiler will also create a getter method for each one of the fields as well. And it will also automatically create the equals method, the hash code method, and the two string methods no need to write any of them. One big advantage here is that if the record changes, the changes to these other methods are automatic. Now that's a relief because we do not have to keep them in sync. Now let's see the generated class. Java provides us with a command called Java P to look at the internals of the class. If we use the Java P command on the employee class that it created from the record, what are we going to see? This is what the class will look like. Look at what the compiler created for us automatically. You can see the class extending from java.lang.record. This also means that the record cannot extend from another class. You can also see that the class itself is final, so no one can extend from it. You will see a canonical constructor. That's the constructor with all the components. This is interesting. If you recall, for a class, if we do not provide a constructor, we get a default no arguments constructor. But for record, we get a canonical constructor, a constructor with all of the member variables as parameters. But this makes sense because a record is supposed to be immutable and so we can set the member variables only during the construction of the object, precisely during the constructor. Now, because a record is finally a class, we can do things which we can do in a class. We can create static variables or static blocks, include another method, include a static method, and so on. For example, here you see we created a static member called CEO who is also an employee. This particular code is actually a bad example because if the CEO is fired or quits, we have to change the record itself. 
but you could initialize the CEO from inside the static block by reading from a properties file. That's fine too. You may want to create your own constructor because maybe you want to do some validations within the constructor or set some defaults for the components. You can override the default behavior which the compiler provides by writing your own constructor. On the screen, you see a canonical constructor, but strangely, you see that there are no parameters to the constructor. That's the new syntax for record. It's not a no arguments constructor. Records allow us to use a compact form of the constructor. That's what you see on the screen. The names of the arguments are the same as the names of the components, first, last, and projects. And that is what is referenced within the constructor. It's just that we don't have to type it in. You can see in the validations for the first and last names, we throw illegal argument exception if they are null. For projects, note that we are setting the project's parameter to an empty set if it is null. Note also here that we are not setting the member variable called projects. We are actually changing the parameter of the constructor itself. The compiler will automatically add the code to set the member variables from the parameters. Again, we are simply changing the parameters and not the member variables. If you do not like the short syntax for record, then you can use the traditional syntax that is used in classes. That's what you see on the screen. Both of these types of constructors are fine, except that they are expressed differently. Choose whatever style you like. You can also create a non-canonical constructor as long as you call the canonical constructor from within. A non-canonical constructor is basically which does not contain all of the components as parameters. On the screen, you see a constructor which takes only first name and last name. This constructor will simply call the canonical constructor and pass null for projects. Now, this is pretty much what the basics of records are. And you can get by with this knowledge of records. But let's go a little bit deeper. Let's talk a little bit about immutable characteristics of a record. It is true that the record is immutable, and you can see that because we don't have any setters in the record class. But when we are dealing with records, or any objects for that matter, these objects can contain references to other objects which may not be immutable. And this is something we should be aware of. In our example, project's component is a set of strings. Now that is certainly not immutable because we can add a new project to this set. Now this is not necessarily a problem with records, but classes in general. Let's take an example. On the screen is an example where we are constructing the employee object by passing the set of projects. Now the member variable projects can be modified outside of the employee object by directly accessing the project's variable. Maybe from the same thread or from a different thread if that thread has access to the project's variable. Now when you get the projects from an employee, we have project A also as part of the project. This means as a whole, even though an employee object cannot be modified, one of its pointing references can be modified. What's the solution to this problem? In our methods, don't accept collections as it is, but create a clone. We basically create a defensive copy of the collections object and then assign it to the member variable. In the current example, we should do this when we accept the project's member and when we return the project's member, both places. Here's the solution. Look at the two places we create a defensive copy. One when we accept the set as part of the constructor and second, when we return the set as part of the getter method. This solution ensures that the project's copy, which is within the employee object, never gets changed. Now, one last thing that I would like to point out here is that records can also be created inside a class. And in such a case, they are called nested records. 
Just like classes can be nested within a class, a record can also be nested within a class. A record which is created within a method is called a local record. If you're unfamiliar with nested classes, check out my video on them. There's a link on the upper right corner of the screen and it talks about different types of nested classes, static or inner. For records in particular, all are static. What this means is that records which are defined within a class do not have an implicit reference to the parent. Now classes on the other hand, if we do not put static in the class which is defined inside another class, then that class will get an implicit reference to the parent. The compiler will make sure that it will have that reference. But for records, we don't have that because records are simply considered as immutable data objects. They don't have a direct association with the parent. Nested records can be used effectively to create temporary tuples. In many languages like Python, we can create structures with arbitrary data and discard it when we don't want it. These are called tuples. And in Java, records can effectively be used as tuples, except that it will have a name associated with it. What you see on the screen is an example. I've taken this straight from the Java enhancement proposal for records. The method find top merchants sorts the list of methods based on the amount of sales done by the merchants. Here, as you can see, a local record named merchant sales is defined within this method. And the intention is to use it only within this method and then discard it. Why is it a local record? Because it is defined within a method. If you look at the logic, we create a stream of merchants. And for each merchant, we compute the sales. And that's the method compute sales, which is actually not shown. We then return the temporary merchant sales record object, which holds merchant and sales together. The sort method then sorts the merchant sales objects based on the sales. And then finally, the map returns the merchant object. As you can see, this temporary record object is very important for holding the merchant data and the sales data together just for doing the sort operation. It's just a temporary record. Hopefully, this has given you a good insight into the use of Java records and how best to use it in your projects. Of course, if you want to use it, you need to be on Java 16 or above.